So I want to take the ideas that Grant Sanderson showed you in the last video and show you kind of how they'd play out in problems. Well, these are really exercises, but you'll you'll see them in problems. Um, so let's say we've got some vector and we want to find a vector that's pointed in the same direction, but with a different length. Like, how would you think about that? So here's what the vector looks like. It's over by five and up by four. Um, so you know you can change the length of a vector by scaling it. So for example, if I multiplied it by two, that would be the same as saying two times five. So I'm multiplying each component by two. So like I go twice as far over and twice as far up. So two times five and two times four. So that's the same thing as the vector 10, eight. Um, so that's made the vector twice as long by multiplying it by two. I can make the vector half as long by multiplying it by one half. But how do I figure out what scaling factor I need in order to create a length of two? I think the first step is let's figure out how long it is right now. So if you remember, length is denoted this way, it's called magnitude. And the magnitude of the vector is just the Pythagorean theorem applied to the components. So it's going to be, uh, what, five squared, ah, five squared plus four squared. So that's gonna be square root of 41. So that's how long it is right now. So if it's the square root of 41 right now, and I wanna make it be a length of two, we've got to figure out what scaling factor can I multiply by that will turn the 41 into two. So in other words, I've got length 41 right now, I'm gonna multiply it by some mystery number and I'm gonna end up with two. So what scaling factor is that? Solving for k, we get that k is two over root 41. Um, so that's what you'd wanna multiply the entire vector by. So uh, I'd have two over root 41 times v is gonna give me a new vector, which is the same as uh, five times the scaling factor for the x component and four times the scaling factor for the y component. So that's gonna give me, let's see, five times two is 10, so 10 over root 41. And let's see, four times two is eight, so that's eight over root 41. And that's the new vector. <clears throat> how would you check to make sure this makes sense? Like, how do we know this is really pointed in the same direction? Well, one way we know is we multiply the x component and the y component by the same amount. So it should be in the same direction. But you could really check by calculating the slope, for example. So the slope here is four fifths. It's the change in y divided by the change in x. The slope here is going to be, let's divide the same thing. Change in y is eight over root 41. Change in x is 10 over root 41. So the root 41s are gonna cancel and eight over 10 is the same as four over five. So you can, you can check that they're headed in the same direction. How do you really know that the length is two? Well, you could check by finding the magnitude of this new vector, apply the Pythagorean theorem. So square this, square this, add them together, take the square root. I guess let's do it. Okay, so I'm writing it down here, x component squared plus y component squared. Let's simplify. So this gives us uh, 100 divided by 41. And this gives us 64 divided by 41. So you can add them together. So that's 164 divided by 41, which is actually the same thing as four. And square root of four is two. So there you go. Um, I don't think there's any particular need to check. I just wanted, I mean, like we solved for the scaling factor that it should have been. I just wanted you to be able to check if you felt uncertain or if you needed to. Here's a different kind of question. Let's say we've got a vector and we know that our vector plus a mystery vector equals some third vector. Can we solve for the B vector? So this is another doing algebra with vectors. Um, so you can think about it either numerically or graphically, and you should be able to do both. So if I use the, the vertical notation here, um, this is the a vector, is the one five. This is the unknown b vector, so I just chose to call the x and y components x and y. And then this is the resulting vector. So you know that the way vector addition works is you can treat the x and y components separately, at least for rectangular uh, representations. So I know that one plus x equals two, therefore x is one. And I know that five plus y equals one, so I'm just reading across here, therefore y is negative four. So the b vector must be one negative four. How does this play out graphically? So there's the a vector over one up five. 
here's the, the resulting vector that I'm trying to get over by two up by one. You know that graphically speaking, vector addition can be represented as taking the vector that you're adding and placing its tail right at the head of the previous vector. So I know that, whoops, sorry, this is the tail. So I know that uh, the motion of A followed by the motion of B needs to result in this motion. So what is this vector B? Well, you just have to look at change in X and change in Y. So here change in X looks like it's plus one, change in Y looks like it's minus four. And that's exactly what we computed over here. <clears throat> I wanna show you one more way of thinking about this. So we can do algebra, but not with the components, just with the vectors themselves. So B is the thing we're trying to solve for. So let's isolate it by subtracting the vector A from both sides. I've got B equals the vector, I'm gonna draw it vertically, the vector two one minus the vector A. So one more time, um, if we replace A with its components, you can think about it component wise. So the B vector should be two minus one is one and one minus five is negative four, which is what we got originally. Um, so we really just did this, but in a different order. We moved the vector before we started thinking about its components. You can also think about this graphically. How would we think about what the vector two one minus A is? Well, here's the vector two one and here's the vector A. So if you we were thinking about what is this vector plus A, it would look like this. I'd have the A vector going up this direction. Um, and I hope you see this is the same direction and distance. I just tried to take this vector and put a copy of it over here. So graphically, what would minus A be? Minus A is just the vector that's the same length, but going in the opposite direction. So if I wanna know what is the green vector minus the A vector, it's like the green vector followed by, trying very care, whoops, oh, I'm screwing it up already, okay. So this is supposed to be negative A here. It's supposed to be the same length going in the opposite direction. So this one goes over by one and up by five. So negative A should go left by one and down by five. So it ends here at this point. So what's the result? I've got this vector plus negative A, which is the same thing as that vector minus A. And the resulting vector is this one. Um, it's what, you, what happens when you combine both motions together, this motion followed by that motion. And if you look at the components of this vector, it's over by one and down by four. And you'll notice that it's the same as the B vector up here, which is the one that we were trying to find. Because remember, it doesn't matter where the vector lives on the plane, all a vector describes is displacement, and these represent the same displacement, a displacement of over one and down four. So that's all I've, so let's like repeat that one because that's a little bit confusing. Algebraically, I wanna solve for B, so I subtracted A. And then I thought, how can I imagine this graphically? Well, this minus A is the same thing as this plus negative A. But what does negative A look like? Here would be this plus positive A. Negative A is in the other direction. So I figured out this plus negative A ends up down here. The resultant vector is the vector that connects your starting point and your end point. So that must be what the B vector is. And then you can look and see what the components are. And then you can put them together back in the original equation. If I take the vector that represents this motion and I add it on the end of A, you can see that A plus that pink vector does in fact take you to the end of the green vector.